Like most adults, the author of Breath, James Nestor, suffered from respiratory problems, and no allergy drug, inhaler, supplements, or diet did him much good. This led him to a decade of traveling, research on the subject of breathing, and self-experimentation. Most of the techniques he explores have been around for hundreds of years. They were created, documented, forgotten, and discovered in another culture at another time, then forgotten again. The book explores evolution, medical history, biochemistry, physiology, physics, athletic endurance, and more, all in the form of an engaging story following the journey of the author doing his research on the lost art of breathing. We are excited to announce the launch of the Read and Grow podcast. Now you have one more medium where you can listen to your favorite book summaries. Subscribing to our show on Apple Podcast or Spotify would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Modern medicine is amazingly efficient at cutting out and stitching up parts of the body in emergencies, but sadly deficient in treating milder chronic system maladies like asthma, headaches, stress, and autoimmune issues that most of the modern population contends with. Improving diet and exercise and removing toxins and stressors from the home and workplace have a profound and lasting effect on the prevention and treatment of these diseases. But breathing is also a key input. That 30 pounds of air that passes through our lungs every day and that 1.7 pounds of oxygen our cells consume is as important as what we eat or how much we exercise. So great advice on healthier living would be to learn how to breathe better. We assume that breathing is a passive action, just something that we do. Breathe, live, stop breathing, die. But breathing is not binary. Let's examine all the aspects of efficient breathing. The great secret of life, always breathe through the nose. Nasal breathing is far more healthy and efficient than breathing through the mouth. The turbinates in the nose warm the air to your body temperature while simultaneously filtering out particles and pollutants. They slow and pressurize air so that the lungs can extract more oxygen with each breath. Another benefit of nasal breathing is that it boosts the release of nitric oxide, a molecule that plays an essential role in increasing circulation and delivering oxygen into cells. Immune function, weight, circulation, mood, and sexual function can all be heavily influenced by the amount of nitric oxide in the body. The nose is a classic example of use it or lose it. When it's denied regular use, it atrophies. Snoring and sleep apnea often follow. Keeping the nose constantly in use, however, trains the tissues inside the nasal cavity and throat to flex and stay open. Exhale fully. The most important aspect of breathing isn't just to take in air through the nose. Inhaling is the easy part. The key to breathing, lung expansion, and a long life that comes with it is on the other end of respiration. It's in the transformative power of full exhalation, of getting the stale air out. Larger lungs equal longer life. Our bodies can survive on short and clipped breaths for decades, and many of us do. But over time, shallow breathing will limit the range of our diaphragms and lung capacity. This overburdens the heart, elevates blood pressure, and causes a rash of circulatory problems. A typical adult engages as little as 10% of the range of the diaphragm when breathing. To extend this range, exhale slowly and fully. The breath you take after a full exhalation is also deeper, richer, and fuller. Breathe slowly. Everyone talks about oxygen. Whether we breathe 30 times or 5 times a minute, a healthy body will always have enough oxygen. What our bodies really want, what they require to function properly, isn't faster or deeper breaths. It's not more air. What we need is more carbon dioxide. Its fundamental role is in delivering the oxygen to the hungry cells. For a healthy body, inhaling pure oxygen would have no benefit. Without sufficient carbon dioxide present, that oxygen will never make it into the cells. We will simply breathe it back out. Rapid and panicked breaths would purge carbon dioxide. 
just a few minutes of heavy breathing above metabolic needs could cause reduced blood flow to muscles, tissues, and organs. We'd feel lightheaded, cramp up, get a headache. Breathing slowly helps raise carbon dioxide levels, which leads to relaxation. Breathe less. Most of us breathe too much, and up to a quarter of the modern population suffers from serious chronic overbreathing. We've become conditioned to breathe too much, just as we've been conditioned to eat too much. Breathing just 10% more than the body's needs could overwork our systems and weaken them. With some effort and training, however, breathing less can become an unconscious habit. To be clear, breathing less is not the same as breathing slowly. The key to optimum breathing and all the health, endurance, and longevity benefits that come with it is to practice fewer inhales and exhales in a smaller volume. The perfect breath. Breathe in for about five and a half seconds, then exhale for five and a half seconds. That's 5.5 breaths a minute for a total of about 5.5 liters of air. You can practice this perfect breathing for a few minutes or a few hours. There is no such thing as having too much peak efficiency in your body. It's no coincidence that meditations, Ave Marias, and dozens of other prayers are synchronized with the inherent cardiovascular rhythms to give a feeling of well-being. Prayer heals, especially when practiced at 5.5 breaths a minute. Advanced Breathing Techniques Feeding the body with more air than it needs is damaging for the lungs right down to the cellular level. Today, the majority of us breathe more than we should without realizing it. However, willing yourself to breathe heavily for a short, intense time can be profoundly therapeutic. That's what techniques like Tumo, Sudarshan Kriya, and Vigorous Pranayams do. They stress the body on purpose, snapping it out of its funk so that it can properly function during the other 23 and a half hours a day. Conscious heavy breathing teaches us to be the pilots of our autonomic nervous systems and our bodies, not the passengers. Improving Airway Obstruction Our ancient ancestors chewed for hours a day every day, and because they chewed so much, their mouths, teeth, throats, and faces grew to be wide and strong and pronounced. They had excellent teeth. Food in industrialized societies became so processed that it hardly required any chewing at all. When people switched from harder foods to soft foods, faces narrowed, teeth became overcrowded, jaws fell out of alignment. Breathing problems followed. Small mouths are one of the reasons why so many of us snore today, why our noses are stuffed and our airways are clogged. The first step to improving airway obstruction is maintaining correct oral posture. This means holding the lips together, teeth lightly touching with your tongue on the roof of the mouth. The second step is chewing. The more we gnaw, the more stem cells get released. Hard chewing builds new bone in the face and opens airways. Like all Eastern medicines, breathing techniques are best suited to serve as preventative maintenance, a way to retain balance in the body so milder problems don't blossom into more serious health issues. Should we lose that balance from time to time, breathing can often bring it back. To learn the exact techniques the author recommends, get the book. It's definitely worth it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to watch our summary of The Oxygen Advantage by Patrick McEwen. Thank you.